think of a very interesting space, a huge one, in which some parts of it look like a sphere, other parts look like a saddle, they curve up in one direction and down in another. Some regions, though, are just perfectly flat. How can we measure these types of warps? How can we quantify this fundamental difference between each region? Gaussian curvature is the answer. And it has deep consequences, not only in pure mathematics, but also in the future of our universe. Gaussian curvature is usually denoted with a capital K. Even though Gaussian curvature is defined only for two-dimensional surfaces, its core idea, so measuring how a space bends, can be generalized to higher dimensions. In cosmology, we apply the same principles to three-dimensional spaces, or 4D spacetime, using tools like sectional curvature and Ricci curvature to describe how the universe bends at each point. Gaussian curvature is defined as the product of two principal curvatures, denoted with the Greek letter, kappa. The principal curvatures can be positive, negative, or zero. In order to understand what these principal curvatures are and how to compute them, imagine the following. This is Luca in a car. Now, he decides to turn to the left. He will naturally feel a force pulling him to the right, though. The acceleration felt by Luca is called centrifugal acceleration in physics. This is actually a fictitious acceleration. The real acceleration here is the one inwards, the one that keeps the car, Luca, and everything inside of it moving along the curved path. This is called centripetal acceleration, and is calculated this way. Where V here stands for tangent velocity and R for the radius. But that's the point here. The radius of what? Well, it must refer to a circle, right? But who said that Luca is moving in a circular path? It might very well be a random curved trajectory. And the formula, A equals V squared over R, still holds. This is a very important concept in differential geometry and it's called the osculating circle. An osculating circle is the circle that best matches how a curve bends at a point. It shares the same position, the same tangent, and the same curvature. The bigger its radius, the larger the bend. The smaller its radius, the tighter the bend. This connects to the formula v squared over r, which tells you how much acceleration is needed to stay on a curved path. Notice how the acceleration and the radius are inversely proportional to each other. So the bigger the radius, the less acceleration is needed. And vice versa. If you imagine moving along a curve, it's like constantly riding along a chain of osculating circles. And staying on track means always being pulled inward. That pull is what we feel as a force. In physics, this shows up in cool ways, like in general relativity, where gravity isn't a force, but just a consequence of objects following curves in spacetime. Those curves act like osculating hyperspheres, and the tighter the bend, the more things feel pulled inward, just like in regular circular motion. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. Going back now to the principal curvatures kappa 1 and kappa 2 of the Gaussian curvature formula, let's connect them to the visual concept of osculating circles. You can cut the surface at any point with vertical planes that contain the normal vector to the surface at that point. Each slice creates a normal curve line in that plane. Each of these curves has an osculating circle that encodes the local curvature at that point. Out of all possible normal slices, there are two that are very special. The first is the one that produces the normal curve that bends the most, which gives maximum curvature, and is called the principal curvature kappa 1. The second special kind of normal slice is the one that produces the normal curve that bends the least, which gives minimum curvature, and is called the principal curvature kappa 2.
These are real numbers. The directions in which they occur are called principal directions, and they can always be proven to be orthogonal. At any point on the surface, in the principal directions, the surface curve through that point, in other words, the intersection of the surface with a plane containing the normal vector and the principal direction, can be locally approximated by an osculating circle. In each principal direction, there is a plane curve lying on the surface. That curve has curvature equal to one of the principal curvatures, kappa 1, 2. And so, it has an osculating circle of radius 1 over the absolute value of kappa 1 or kappa 2. The osculating circles are the best fitting circles to the surface in the directions of principal curvature. Good. But how do we calculate these real numbers kappa 1 and kappa 2? We're going to show you the step-by-step -step algorithm of how to do it. And after that, you can think of any random surface and try it out on your own. For a more detailed version of this explanation, check out the PDF link in the description. Step 1. Parametrization. Define your surface as a function of two variables. So, a parametrization. In this case, u and v. Step 2. Tangent vectors. Compute the tangent vectors at each point by calculating the following partial derivatives. These vectors span the tangent plane at each point. Step 3. Unit normal vector. Calculate the normal vector by taking the cross product of the tangent vectors and then normalize, so that it has magnitude 1. This is called the unit normal to the surface at each point. Step 4. First fundamental form. Compute the first fundamental form, denoted as a Roman 1. This is a matrix with entries being dot products of the tangent vectors we calculated in the previous step. x, u, and x, v, so the coordinate tangent vectors, are not always orthogonal. So in other words, it is possible that x, u dot product with x, v is different from 0. But when computing principal curvatures, these tangent vectors form a special orthogonal basis. This means that, in this special case, the tangent vectors will be zero, and therefore their dot product will be zero. Since we're not diving into the theory of differential forms here, we will just think of the first fundamental form as the matrix version of the inner product. It tells us how to compute lengths and angles. It's the metric tensor in the surface's coordinates. Just as, for example, we can represent the metric on flat spacetime this way. And equivalently as a matrix in this way. If you want to learn more about this specific metric, check out this video where we built all of these concepts from scratch in a very intuitive and simple way. Step 5. Second fundamental form. Now we compute the second fundamental form, which is denoted as a Roman 2. This is a matrix with entries being dot products of the normal vector and the partial derivatives of the tangent vectors. Again, we will not get into the theory of differential forms here, but the second fundamental form is like second directional derivatives. Think of it as taking a vector, differentiating it twice, and then extracting the component in the direction you're interested in. In this case, this direction is given by the normal vector n. Step 6. Shape operator matrix. This is just the product of the inverse first fundamental form matrix with the second fundamental form matrix. It describes how the normal vector changes as you move along different directions on the surface. Step 7. Eigenvalues. It's the last one, guys, I promise. Compute the eigenvalues of the shape operator matrix. So if the matrix looks like that, we calculate its eigenvalues through the following formula. If you're curious to see how we got to this expression, check out the PDF link, as always. But before that, if you feel that you need to better understand what eigenvalues are, how to calculate them, and how to visually and intuitively interpret them, check out this video in the channel. We finally did it. These eigenvalues are the maximum and minimum principal curvatures kappa 1 and kappa 2. Now, all you have to do is to multiply these two numbers, and then you get the famous Gaussian curvature at each point. Okay, 
time to see a concrete example, the two torus. Following the algorithm, we find each result for each step. Step 1. Parametrization. Step 2. Tangent vectors. Step 3. Unit normal vectors. Step 4. The first fundamental form. Step 5. The second fundamental form. Step 6. The shape operator. Step 7. The eigenvalues. Once we found the eigenvalues of the shape operator, in other words, the principal curvatures kappa 1 and kappa 2, we can calculate the Gaussian curvature for each point of the two torus. So, for example, for points inside of the donut shape, the Gaussian curvature is negative. For points outside, it is positive. And the Gaussian curvature is zero, so the surface is considered flat, only along these lines on top and on the bottom, dividing the outside from the inside regions. The sign of curvature isn't just mathematical curiosity. It has profound implications for the geometry of our universe. And in this context, we move beyond just Gaussian curvature, which apply only to two-dimensional surfaces. And instead, we use higher dimensional generalizations. And this way, we can describe the curvature of 3D space or even 4D spacetime. These include Ricci curvature, sectional curvature, and scalar curvature. And each of them capture different aspects of how the space bends. In cosmology, the large scale shape of space itself could be spherical, so positive curvature, which would be closed, or hyperbolic, negative curvature, which is open, or even flat, zero curvature, and is also open. This is important because it will determine whether the universe will collapse, expand forever, or eventually find equilibrium. Current observations, like those from the cosmic microwave background, show us that the universe is very close to flat. But we still can't say that exactly, because as you can imagine, this is super difficult to measure. In any case, understanding curvature isn't just math for fun. It's about understanding the fate of the universe. Don't forget that you can send us your own personal research. Find more details in the description. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love this one. See you guys there.